JavaScript is quite a powerful language when it comes to being asynchronous. You can do HTTP requests, have WebSockets, have event listeners and read from files, all of that while being completely asynchronous. Now, before we had the features of a board controller and a board signal, it was quite cumbersome to be able to deal with async operations within JavaScript. But nowadays it's much easier and I want to show you everything that you need to know regarding that. So if you're ready, let's get started. Alrighty, so here we have different examples on aborting things. For example, how to abort fetch requests, event listeners, websockets, and so on. But before I expand the code and we take a look into it, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future videos like this. And of course, this is really going to help my channel. So thank you very much for that and let's get started. So I'm going to uncomment one block after another and explain how to, uh, well, basically what's happening here. So we have a board controller, of course, and uh, you are using it like this by instantiating it, okay? So we have a controller here. So what is happening with fetch request? Imagine we just have a normal fetch request and it's an async function, which means we can use await inside. If you are not familiar with async wait, watch this video that is popping up on the right side of the screen and you can also find the link in the description. But basically we're fetching uh, basically a to-do one, okay? And then we have another promise that we await for, which is converting to JSON and constant logging this out. Just to make sure that this is works, I'm going to actually call index.js and we are expecting this kind of a result. So we get the user, title, completed, and so on. Okay, so far so good. And we are calling this function here. But what if we have a use case where based, based on some kind of a condition, we actually want to cancel this request. So there's actually a way in to do this with Ajax requests in XML, but I don't think there's an easy way to do it with the fetch request, which is the newer API, right? And one solution is obviously to use the abort controller. So how would you do that? The way you would do this is for first of all, by supplying another option to this fetch request. So if you hover over it, or I hover over it, obviously, we see that, well, we have an input, which is a request info, and we have init. But I don't think this is the right name. I think it's actually options. So I would like to go to the documentation of, um, to, to, the, to the MDN and look for fetch API. So here the fetch API and the fetch request. And let's see what we have here. So the syntax is the resource, which we already have, which is this URL. And we also have options. So let's take a look what kind of options we have. We have a method, headers, body. If you don't specify the header, obviously it's gonna default to get. And we don't need a body, mode, credentials, and so on. And here we have, here, 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 signal. An abort signal object instance allows you to communicate with a fetch request and abort it if desired via an abort controller. So going back to our code, turns out we can pass another object of options here. And I'm going to pass a signal. You see, it's already recommending it, recommending me a signal. And I'm going to grab the controller from here. So controller dot signal, just like this. And of course, in order to cancel the request itself, I'm going to call controller.abort. This is the main uh, function or main method of, from the abort from the abort controller, from the controller here, that actually performs the aborting. Okay, I'm gonna save this now. I'm going to expand the terminal a little bit so that it's easier for us to see what's happening. And I'm going to call the same um, file. And now we see that we have an error called abort error, and it says the operation was aborted, all right? So this is coming from our code. It's because we aborted it. And there's a kind of a cool way to actually check for abort errors. So we can say error name is like, let's say, well, not let's say, but it's called abort error, and then, we can actually put this 
inside here. All right. Now that we put put inside here, we're going to make sure that whenever this whenever we see this error, it's definitely coming from the abort controller. So I'm going to call it again. And now you see this here. All right. And of course, you can uh, supply like a custom message, let's say, um, aborted or aborted because of me, All right? Just like this. And oops, this must be inside. And this is going to work properly. All right. So this is the first use case that we saw when it comes to abort controllers. So I'm going to comment this out, collapse and go to the next use case. And I'm also going to clear the console and make it smaller so that we have more space. Alrighty. So what else do we have here? So we have event listeners. Turns out you can use a board controller with event listeners as well. Even though many people don't don't know that. Many people think that a board controllers are only for um for fetch requests. Actually no, you can use a board controller for any asynchronous operation. It can be a fetch request, it can be event listeners, it can also be reading a file, writing a file, you know, with Node.js. So here we have some interesting things. First of all, I guess you already noticed that we are grabbing signal from the controller object. So we're going to be using this later. And here, let's just quickly understand what the code is doing. So we have an event listener for mouse move. Basically, whenever we're moving our mouse, we're going to call this log function. And what the log function does, it basically logs mouse moved. That's it, as simple as that. And we have another event listener, mouse up. Mouse up happens whenever you click the mouse and then let it go. So as soon as it goes up, we are going to remove all the listeners. So first of all, inside this function, we're going to remove the listener for the mouse move or the original one. And we're passing the function that we want to remove from the listener. And the second one is going to be mouse up. So basically, it's kind of recursive because mouse up triggers remove event listeners and it re removes this same function, right? Um, just pause the video and think about it if it doesn't make sense. But basically, all this thing is about event listeners. So yes, we can obviously do that. So but how can a board controller help us? So turns out you can pass a signal to event listeners as well. So let's go to MDN and search for add event listener. I always do that. Just go to the documentation and you're going to find everything. So let's look at the syntax. So the syntax is type listener, which is the function, all right, and options. So what kind of options do we have here? So options, capture, once, passive, and signal. So an abort signal. The listener will be removed when the given abort signal object blah 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 method is called. So turns out here as well we can also pass an abort signal. So we're gonna do like this, create another object again, signal, which is equal to signal, like this. But since we are using ES6 and node, I think 18 specifically you can actually just remove this. So it's going to work just like just like signal, signal, right? It's the same thing. And uh, one thing to mention, abort signal is available from node version 15 and above. So make sure that you have the newest version of node. And um, so yeah, we have a, an abort signal here. And we are also going to have a signal here. Right? So in order to remove these listeners, as soon as the signal has been aborted, what we need to do is remove these, first of all, because we are not going to use a remove event listeners, event listener function anymore. And instead, we are going to call controller abort. As simple as that. All right. This is going to cancel or remove these event listeners automatically. Because let's see what it says. The listener will be removed, removed, that's a keyword, 
when the given abort signal object's abort method is called. So we are calling this method abort, and it means the signal are going to cause these event listeners to be removed automatically. So this is a cool feature that you can use with event listeners. But here's a cooler thing. Let me expand this. So turns out, it's uncomment. So turns out abort controller or abort signal actually has its own event listener. Okay, that, that sounds like an event listener. Uh, how's it called? Uh, the movie from Leonardo DiCaprio, Inception, event listener Inception. So an abort has an abort event listener inside what? Yes, it does. So, and it works like this. I'm going to comment these guys out so that they're not on our way, but we still have controller and signal. Okay, so I'm gonna call abort on this controller and we have the signal that is here and we're listening for add event listener. And as soon as we have uh, um, an event abort, we are going to call this anonymous function and inside it, we are just console logging that it is aborted. And the reason why we say once true is again, let's go to MDN. Once is a Boolean value indicating that the listener should be invoked at most once after being added. So basically that the listener doesn't hang in the memory and it works only once, all right? I'm going to save this. Um, actually, do I need to do that? Terminal, new terminal. I guess it's gonna work right away. So let's see. Node index.js and abort controller got aborted as we expected because we're listening on the signal for this um, event. All right, cool. So what else do we have here? We have still a lot of stuff. So one cool thing that you already noticed is that Abort signal is quite flexible, right? You can use it not only with, how to say, not only specifically asynchronous operations, of course, we can use it with any asynchronous operation, but also with your own use cases when you use the abort event listener. So why is it red? Oh, it's because it's declared here. Right, let's uncomment this, or rather comment this. So let's look at our example. We have the same controller and signal, and we are initializing a WebSocket. So the WebSocket is here, so created from the new WebSocket, and now we have some kind of URL, which is example.com. And usually what you do to kind of close the socket is you call this socket.close method, all right? But what if we want to be a bit smarter and based on some um, signal that is passed during this uh, init WebSocket function, we are closing it automatically. First of all, we can do that by simply um, checking if the signal was aborted or not. If not, okay, let's continue. And we simply add this event listener. So what it's gonna do is nothing if you don't abort it. But let's say we initialize the WebSocket and then as this socket is there and it's running and we're receiving and sending messages and so on, at some point, we take the controller and we abort it. So let's say after three, 30 seconds to close our WebSocket. So what's gonna happen? So this abort event is gonna fire because we are passing the signal here and it's going to uh, basically close the socket, all right? So it's going to cl close the socket and you are going, basically that's the end, <laughs> the socket is closed. And now one interesting thing is that with the abort controller, you can actually pass a reason, which is a string. So you can say like, um, tired of the WebSocket. So what's gonna happen is whenever you're listening for this abort uh, and, and the close function is fired, you can actually check for this message here inside. Uh, and the way you do this is actually like this. So it's going to be if signal, let's say it was already aborted, it's going to be a reason. And wait, is it like this? Let me check. 
abort signal. Abort reason, exactly. Uh, a JavaScript value providing the abort reason once the signal has aborted. So you can basically console log this same value here, like this. Signal reason, as simple as that. All right, and I want to show you one last example of how flexible the abort signal is. So let's open this one, class constructor. So you can use the abort signal with classes as well, especially heavy, um, heavy, let's say heavy methods that are doing some heavy jobs. So we have some object and whenever we initialize the object or the constructor rather, we pass in a signal, all right? And by the way, you don't have to call this controller, you can call this something like customize so that you know what it's referring to. Let's say a set, set some object controller, right? And we are passing it here and we have a signal now inside our class. And let's say we're doing some complex operation. So first we're gonna check if this signal has been aborted, then we're gonna throw an error. Otherwise, we are gonna have a heavy loop, okay? 10 for loops, uh, 10, 10 iterations, very heavy. But let's say we want to be careful and as long as there is no um, ab um, like abort method called, let me demonstrate that. So clear the console, node index.js, we have 10 iterations, right? But let's say I try to abort it right away, just as a use case. So controller.abort, like this, save it, run it. Oh, it still ran. Oh, okay, I, I just realized my mistake. Of course, we run this function and by that time it's not aborted, so it's gonna run the loop. But what if before running this method, we abort it first of all? And now let's run it. And you're gonna see that it was aborted because complex operation aborted, because we wanted to abort it and now we have our custom error. How cool is that? Well, this is pretty much it when it comes to abort controller and abort signal. Let me know if you still want to uh, yeah, learn more about it and I will try to answer you in the comment section. Hey there, it's me again. I just wanted to quickly say thank you very much for watching this video and smashing the like button. And if you want to stay up to date with such cool topics, make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss whenever a new video is out. And I'm gonna see you in the next one.